Hey everybody, it's David Gibbons, and this is DME TV. Today we got David Gibbons in the house with DME TV. Dave, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up everybody? How are you doing? David Gibbons here. How you know where you're from and you know how you got your start in music? Um, so I'm from a small town called Green Palm, South Carolina, in the Carlton County region. And I started uh, music at the age of two. Then I'm um, a church kid, pastor's kid, started singing in choirs. Um, I didn't start writing my own songs until I was 14 years old. And I didn't start really taking my music seriously until 2015. So if you really want to say my, my music career has starts and stops until it just had like a full on like start and just go. Right. So um I can honestly say like twenty fifteen was where I just said, All right, we're gonna do this. This is what we're gonna do, this is how we're gonna do it and we're here now. <laughs> okay. And you say you're from where down? Green Pond? Green Pond, South Carolina. And was that was that located? So Green Pond is situated between Charleston, Walterboro, South Carolina, and Beaufort, South Carolina. We I kinda call it like the gateway town. Because people just pass through it, but you have to go through Green Pond, other than I-95, to get to all three towns at, at simultaneously. Okay, okay. So you said your so you one of your parents is a is a pastor. Both of my parents were pastors. Um, my father, God rest his soul, um, we have we have he started a church in Beaufort, South Carolina, called New Covenant Fellowship Ministries of Beaufort. Um, and, you know, I was on the praise team all the time. I worked audio visuals. I did children's church for a minute. So I was really involved in, you know, church life. And it was interesting. It was hard. Okay. But it was interesting. So that's good. So basically from the South, a lot of us, we got our start in the church, you know. Um, and, and that's kind of interesting because you, you, you you've done a little bit more than just, you know, the basic singing on the choir. You have a have a lot of you know a, a strong background in, in education you know as far as with the entertainment side right so um so tell me like as far as um what are you doing now you have a single out called addiction yes yes absolutely I I kind of want to know like that track like how did that come about because the sound is. I like the sound of it. It's it's not the usual sound that you would probably hear, especially coming out of South Carolina that I've heard. And I like the track. Let's kind of talk about you know who's who's the, who's behind the track and what are, what were your thoughts? You know, what I'm saying when you were writing uh, that song. Um, with addiction, um, so for anyone who's you know doesn't well, you're just now getting to know me. Um, I'm Trinidadian. My mom's from Trinidad and Tobago. And I really wanted a song that represented that culture. Um, in the project I'm working on right now, it's telling a story. And the part that addiction fits in is basically talking about being addicted to a memory, being addicted to somebody that you said, I don't want to be with anymore. But in the end, you keep falling back with that person. You keep falling in love with that person. And so the character in this story, when I was starting to when I find, when I started writing it, was basically he had just dealt with rejection. He said, "I'm moving on from this person," but the memory of the infatuation and the lust for that person is overtaking him, and that's where addiction comes in. Okay, so is this a this is a true song, true it story? Is a true story. Okay, it is a true story. Okay. Um, Basically, uh, I went to a depression after my sister passed away in 2016. And I went through this, mo this moment of I was addicted to memory. I was addicted to, a, to you know, just things that weren't really good for me. Okay. And so I wanted to talk about that in, in song form. Like, I'm addicted not to a specific person but to just darkness and just things, just self-destruction. Okay, okay, who, who produced the track? Um, the track was initially produced by The Legion, and then when I got, when I got the instrumental, it was produced by um, my mentor, Andre Armager, and his wife, Miss Mahogany, in Beaufort, South Carolina. 
they helped me cultivate the song, really get the vocals down. And that was one of the longest songs I actually had to process. Like, okay. it, I, what I thought was going to be a week, a day, it literally took me about two months. Two months? Two oh. months. Wow. So how, how is it like working with your team? You know, I mean, let's, let's, let's talk about your team and who's on your team. Um, I have my vocal, my vocal producer and my, my music producer, the Armagers, Miss Mahogany and Andre, and they really mentor me in how I'm supposed to do music business, how I'm supposed to handle business. And it's fun when we work together. It's like, it's not a stressful process. It's not a, oh, it's strictly business. Like we laugh, we joke, we have fun. We, we take a moment before we even start to pray and to meditate and to really clear out anything that we're dealing with. Because what people don't understand is when we record, everything that you have on your brain, it hinders you from actually giving your best. And so you really want to just expel the negativity as soon as you enter the door so that you can give your best performance and your best track. Okay. Um... So for 2020, um, what's, what's, what would you have going for 2020? I, I noticed you, you posted some things about a podcast and some other things that uh, I think, what, you're going to shoot a film, film, film style movie. Um, let's talk about that. Let, let the people know. Um, so first of all, I just got off a fast. <laughs> I just did like a whole month fast and I did that while planning. So I have all these announcements that were just like back to back to back to back Yeah, last night. So... First off, I have a um, very special announcement I just announced that I am releasing the first half of my debut album called The Electric Kingdom. Um, and it's part, part one is called Innocence Plus Fallen. So it has all the episodes, which I call my singles episodes, like Crush, Addiction, Pulse. And there's a new exclusive song that's coming out along with the EP, as well as there's an exclusive remix to one of my songs with a major artist, but I can't say who at this time right now. Um, I am starting a podcast, so for indie artists, it's called the World, the Earth According to David, and basically this podcast is a show about nothing, kind of like Seinfeld, it's a show about nothing, but it's about anything. You can talk about anything, you can say anything, and for all my indie artists out there, if you have songs that you want me to put on, we have this segment called Indie Power as well where we can push your, put your song out there and the fans can vote if they like it or not and go and stream it or we'll put it on the Twitch channel. That's a thing too. We'll get on that later. Um, put it on the Twitch channel. Put it on the website. My motto is I want to support fellow artists. Artists supporting artists. I've seen so much in the music industry, so much beef and hate like, oh, this, well, I'm better than this one, better than this one. Instead of being against each other, why not come together as one unit? We're all trying to reach the same goals. I'm a believer of if we work together, we can eat together at the same table. It doesn't have to be any any beef or any negativity. Right. Let me, you know, me actually this, though. I'm definitely, because uh, I haven't really touched uh, too many artists, you know what I'm saying, past Charleston. I'm familiar with a couple of artists from Walterboro. I didn't get to interview them. But how is the music scene, like, Walterboro, Buford, in your area? Um, well, the music scene in the low country, it's very scarce if unless you go to Charleston. Right, right, because I'm from Georgetown, so yeah. Charleston is right there. I'm yeah. in between Charleston and Murphy Beach. If you go anywhere outside of Charleston, the music scene is very scarce. And then, if you're talking about, like, black artistry, it's very divided. Where it's like, oh, we can't come together and work together. Or you don't really see a lot of black artist, artists or Latino artists out in the low country. You see more, you know, rock artists. You see more country artists. But you don't really see a lot of, you know, black artists coming together. So the music industry is both scarce and divided. So what's your plans on changing that, man? I'm doing my best to create platforms for South Carolina artists to come together. 
And then, you know, I wouldn't even just say South Carolina artists. I say artists in general. Um, I'm doing my best to use my platform, whatever I can, to bring us all together, especially my black artists, my black pop artists, EDM artists, rock artists. I really want to bring us all together onto one table. Everyone's saying, you know, they want to sit at somebody's table. I'd rather build my own table and allow people to sit at it. Everyone's invited. That's the kind of thing I'm trying to create. And it's difficult, but you know what? I can do all things through Christ and strength. Right now, your growth. Let's talk about your growth. Tell me the growth from the first song that you made that you can remember up until now. How, ha how has David Gibbons evolved? Ain't that bad now. Ugh. I can all, let me let me tell you this. Okay, let me just say I when I first started in 2015, I recorded 20 songs in 10 hours. And after and that was supposed to be my first album. I originally had a whole completed album way back in 2015. I threw that whole thing away. Okay. Cause it it wasn't it wasn't the quality that I was expecting. What do you mean by quality? I mean the actual quality of the song or just like the lyrics? Everything. The, everything. Okay. Everything. Okay. Like the lyrics was crummy. The the sound wasn't was crummy. The my vocals were crummy. And I and I did it because I did it out of grief. I did it out of grief. I did it out of sadness. I did it because I just wanted to put something out there. I was rushing it instead of taking time to go through the process. I think I only released one song from that canceled project because it was a good testing ground. See, okay, where do I fit in? Okay. Into well, what music. was that song? It's called Welcome to the Show. Okay. I released that 2016 during a hurricane. <laughs> okay. Um, and it was a good testing ground. I got a couple friends here at it, and they were brutally honest. They were like, yeah, don't ever do that again. I mean, that's good that we're honest. You know, some people tell the artists, you know, especially friends, yeah, that's dope. I like that. In actuality, it might not be that great. Or it might need some work. So, so since we're talking about being honest and honesty, the people around you, when they break something down, because some people I've noticed, they'll tell an artist, yeah, that's trash. When actually, Ali, they should break it down and tell them, "Hey, this is this is how you should do it." You know what I'm saying? Or constructive criticism. Let's, how's that around you? I tell the people around me, be as honest as you can. Don't be rude about it, but right. be as honest as you possibly can. Don't tell me that it's good and then it's not. Right. Tell me that it is. If it's crap, tell me it's crap. If it's BS, tell me it's BS. If you say, okay, you can do this a different way, tell me how I can improve it. I know that I'm not the greatest of all time. That takes time to be the greatest of all time. And even the greatest of all time don't even think they're the greatest of all time. Right. It takes work, and it takes people to say, all right, you can improve. And I'm always the person who's like, let me improve myself. Let me, let me improve. Voice classes, dance classes, I'm always trying to improve. Because I know that if I don't perfect my craft, I'm going to lose it. And that's with any artist. So to all my artists out there, go and practice. Go rehearse. Do what you have to do. Go learn a new skill. Because you have to perfect your craft. You are in this business. And that means 24-7, you got to eat, sleep, drink, make love to this business and your craft. Right. It's, it's, a, it's an investment. It's an investment. You definitely have to tell me some of the artists that influenced you. You know when you were coming up. That's a lot. <laughs> That's you, you know, you give one or two, one or two artists that influenced you that made you say, you know, I want to pursue this. You know, and it it doesn't have to be a major artist. It could be a local artist, whoever that influenced you to say, I'm gonna go ahead and pursue this. This is what I want to do. I've got like a top five. <laughs> okay, you can drop the top five. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, my number one is Prince. Prince is my number one. I, I love Prince's music. Yeah. And not just like Purple Rain. I love 1999. I love Controversy. I love Graffiti Bridge, Musicology. Even the, 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 
the original streaming um, albums that because he, he was the, he really is the originator of streaming and digital downloads um, in the back in the nineties, and I just love his creativity, his, his him not being afraid to be himself. And I think a lot of us were afraid to just be crazy and weird. And, but he was never afraid, and that really inspires me. Um, Don Richard, um, if you don't know who Don Richard is, um, she originally was part of Diddy's Danny Kane, Dirty Money, and now she's one of the few big indie female pop icons. And she really, and she really inspired me to say we need more black pop pop artists. We need more black electronic artists. Um, all her albums are super dope. Golden Heart, Black Heart, Redemption Heart, New Breed. Great artist, uh, Celine Dion, lover. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lord, uh, Shirley Caesar, lover, and I think my final was Whitney Houston. Jan Jackson, can't forget Jan Jackson. Either Whitney, Whitney Houston or Janet Jackson. <laughs> Janet Jackson mostly because I I know it's controversial. I wasn't really a big Michael fan, but I was always a huge Janet fan. A huge Janet fan. Definitely. So what what genre do you? Fall under? Do you categorize yourself under a certain genre, or you're just a music maker? I don't really categorize myself per se meant to myself, but just to make it easier for people to understand what kind of music that I do, I always say pop, R and B, EDM. Okay. I always say pop, R and B, EDM. Those those three strictly. Okay. I. I'm on this this thing where it's, I want to see more diversity in pop music, so I want to be you know the black male pop star. I love R and B because that's roots, that's you know where most African American music is founded is in R and B, and I love EDM because you don't see many people like me in EDM. Right. So I do all three. Okay. okay. So man, go ahead and shout out the people, man. That's you know out there supporting you, that help you, your team. Whoever you want to give a shout out to, and, and, and you know, let the, let the world know. All right. Hey, everybody. This is David Gibbons. I say thank you to everybody who supports me. Listen, I would not be here without you. I would not be here making the music that I make if you guys didn't support me. I want to say thank you. You are such a blessing to me. You are such a blessing in my life. And I hope you guys stick around and enjoy the ride with me because this is a journey that we're both going on together. So thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. Go ahead and drop the social media. Let everybody know they can find your music. You can find find my music on Spotify, Tidal, or wherever you get your, street, your streams or downloads from. You can also find me at www.davidworld.us. You can find me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram at davidsworld1898 on all those platforms. Word. Right. Hey, David, man, appreciate you coming through, making that drive to Columbia. Come check out Damien TV and sit down with us. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying, we catch up with you in the future, man. Thank you so much for having me. Like, for real, like, it's an honor to be here. I'm blessed that you invited me. So thank you so, so much. Definitely. Peace.